Welcome. Today we're working on lab eight, acids, bases, and buffers, and we will be skipping part A today and working only on parts B and C. So first off, we're gonna look at um, part B. We're gonna do only numbers one through four, and we'll be looking at solutions that are not buffers. Um, so we'll look at adding acid and base just to pure water, and here's some of the chemicals we'll be using. Water, red cabbage indicator, a strong acid and base, and um, we've got pH paper to help us measure pH, and then a few beakers set up here. So in the first beaker, this is part B, um, we're gonna add water first, 50 mils of water, and then five mils of red cabbage indicator, or RCI as you see it written there. Um, the way you make red cabbage indicator is you just boil red cabbage, purple cabbage, and the pink water that you get off of it is um, an indicator meaning it changes colors depending on the pH of the solution. So you can see um, the pH here is about six or so with that water um, red cabbage indicator mixture. For the next beaker, we're gonna put the same water and indicator in, except for this time, we're going to add some hydrochloric acid. Um, just a few drops of this should cause the pH to drop dramatically. And with that, we should see at least a bit of a color change. So we add a few drops of that hydrochloric acid, and we'll stir it up to mix it. You can see the color gets darker pink, which tells us the pH changed, and then the pH paper, we never dip the paper right into the solution, we spot it outside of it, and the pH is about maybe between two and three um, for that. So we can see our pH dropped from six down to two or three. Next up, we've got some water again. Um, we want to control and do the same thing on all of these. Add some red cabbage indicator, and now we're going to add some sodium hydroxide, which is a base. It's got the hydroxide in it. Um, we could tell HCl is an acid to add an H in front. So we're going to add those few drops of sodium hydroxide. Just a few, about four drops like the last one. And bases have high pHs, so we're expecting when I add this to water for the pH to skyrocket. Um, which it did, I can see the color is a very different um, color. And when I check the pH, when I spot that there, I can see the pH paper has turned right around like maybe a 10 or so um, color, that dark green turquoise color. So here's the results from B. Now we're going to work on part C, where we make a buffer, and then we add the same acid and base to that. So in the buffer, the first ingredient is a weak acid, acetic acid, which is vinegar. It would smell like vinegar if you were in lab. And the second ingredient is a weak base, which is sodium acetate. The acid is there to neutralize bases. The base is there to neutralize acids. We add some indicator, so we can keep an eye on what our um, pH is doing, kind of real time. And as we check the pH of that buffer solution, you can see it's right around four. This wouldn't be a good buffer for your blood because its pH is too low. You need more like seven in blood, uh, but it's good for the experiment. So now we're going to add those same four drops of hydrochloric acid that we added in part B. And we're going to see if the pH changes in the same dramatic way that it did last time. Color is just a little darker pink. When I check the pH, it's still right around four. So no big color change, no big pH change. That's what we want from a buffer, right? We don't want things to change. That's the whole idea of having a buffer. So now we're going to add um, some sodium hydroxide, uh, first a couple of drops to neutralize the acid, and then a couple of drops to match it to the um, sodium hydroxide from part B. And again, boring, no color change, no pH change. So the buffer is doing exactly what it's supposed to, keeping that really constant pH of 4. So now we're going to try and exceed what the buffer can neutralize. So just squirt in a couple full droppers, or about four milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And you can see that that sodium hydroxide has exceeded the buffer's capacity. Um, there's not enough acid in the buffer to neutralize all that base. So now my pH has skyrocketed to maybe 10 or even 11. So here's a quick reminder of what we saw from part B with no buffer present. And then for part C, um, the final results also. So last of all, you don't get to do this part, um, but it's fun in lab to just start mixing beakers for this experiment. So what happens if I add more acid, more base, or start to mix beakers together? So we're going to take a look at that, picking up where we left off. Um, we're sitting here with our buffer, and we're going to start adding just whole squirts of acid. So it was basic, 
but by adding acid, we can neutralize that base, and we can get back to a relatively acidic pH, actually kind of like the color of that water there. If I add the base, um, remember there were only a few drops in here, um, but when I add that base, I'm back to a buffer now, so the pH is not changing very dramatically. A little bit of extra acid there. Um, so I have relatively acidic, but also still a buffer in here. So now I'm going to try to add some base, some sodium hydroxide. Again, we're just kind of playing and having fun here. So we add the base, and I can see some of that green, but once I stir it, the acid and the buffer are able to neutralize it. A little bit of green, but again, it goes back to pink. Now we're having that buffer active to neutralize the base that's added. So I'm going to have a little bit more trouble neutralizing that base. And then one final big squirt, another mill or so, and now I have exceeded um, and turned very basic. Thanks for watching. Um, now you can go do your lab report.